This is Dan Max, the trading agent. This is a stock trading and recap channel that I wanted to share to the masses. In a probability game, there's no certainty. Here are my insights and predictions. Hello everyone, this is Dan Max at EXP Realty, aka the trading agent. This is the Veterans Day recap, November 11th, 2021. Let's do this. We'll start off with Bitcoin. See nothing wrong with it. It's just chopping under and around the old breakout. Shaking out the weak hands before it probably goes higher. At this point, China has threatened to do whatever they're going to do about Bitcoin for seems like years. The same threat, you know, it's the uh, boy who cried wolf. No one gives a shit. I think we're holding up 65,000 area. Just hang around there, give or take one or 2,000. If you're trading at short term, know your spots, but if you're a long term holder, I don't see anything wrong here. Obviously, set your stops. I'd say if it gets below 58,000, you probably got a problem. But I know that's a wide range, but Bitcoin's volatile. The more volatile something is, the more space and room you need to give it. Let's rip into Roblox. <clears throat> we talked about this going higher, pulling back, and might you need to look for entries on the pullback. I did a video on this earlier and said if you got in here at the support, look what's happening. It's compressing under this downtrend. Once it compresses and goes, we will be adding more. We added the retest here. So just really that simple. Keep it you know, in mind that if you're in in the 93 area like we recommended, use your stop as your entry. If you bought and you've been holding long term, there really isn't much to do. Just have your plan whatever fits your fits your style and what your plan is just stick to it just again repeat stick to your plan whatever it is your disciplines your stops your targets whatever you want the dollar look at that it looked like it was a sell i was wrong yesterday's action was a big green candle looks like we're going up to channel high I told people i have no desire to play anything dollar until it either breaks out of this upper channel or fails out of this lower channel it's not really enough enough of anything to really get me excited about the TLT the bond market was closed today for Veterans Day looked like just an inside day going nowhere we talked about getting in the blue zone we had back off now we're at the old downtrend this doesn't really seem too bad to me because sometimes when you break out you retest breakout areas the volume yesterday wasn't that great but We'll see what happens. I'm still expecting lower rates next year. Everybody and their mom is expecting higher rates, and usually everybody's wrong. When you know I'm in real estate, and every real estate broker, mortgage broker, says rates are going higher next year, they've been wrong. The Feds are real good at manipulating rates. Let's just call it what it is. So, how the mechanics of where, what causes this, I don't know. Well, I kind of know, but it's not even worth getting into. Just trust that the Feds can control the rates. Clearly, they have because. Normally, so interest rates would be 5 or 6% minimum. That's what we saw in the 90s, 2000s. VIX, we talked about the W pattern. Going to create a pop in VIX. We got it. I don't know how much higher we got to go, but you saw that pop. Hopefully, you anticipated it. If you had market risk names that were a little overheated, <clears throat> you know the names because we talk about them all the time. You saw the pullback. You could have added. Now you can play it from there. It depends on your time frames, but... If you're up a big amount, tick of the profits at some point, or the profits will be taken. Spy talked about this upper channel. It's pretty close. Didn't get there, but now we're at the eight day, ten day most important moving averages for traders. The volume doesn't really say much. This is typically a seasonal bullish time of year. Just manage your trades. If you want me to tell you what's going to happen next, I can get out a crystal ball and try to rub it real nice and tell you what's going to happen, but. I would say as long as we're in this channel, there's really nothing to do. Because at any point we could retest the highs or just and then you could go higher or it could just chop here and there's really not a lot of information to, you know, play off of. So what I would rather do is wait for the channel 20 day to break if you want a short. We'll draw a little circle so you can have a reference. You know, if this breaks, short it. If we break out, go long or play the bottom of the channel and buy it you just you got to keep it simple don't play around in between ranges i tell people that all the time you put yourself in a position to 
get burned hard if you are incredibly wrong, which you will be. I am at times, and it's just part of the game. QQQ talked about this little pennant tightening up up here. This might be a selling point. Everything lined up perfectly. And guess what? We've pulled back. Now what I would anticipate, we're probably going to test the 20-day at some point. What we do from there, I don't know. Because, again, as much as I really would like to be bearish because of none of the prices in the market, the seasonality and the when the interest rates stay low, there's nowhere else to put your money. There's no alternatives. There used to be an alternative. You used to go to the bond market. When you wanted a 5 6 7% safe return, that's where you went. That's not even the case anymore. You would be never, well, not say never, but you never find that in this market. But, you know, who knows about the future. But at this point, people are gambling. They're going to bet on stocks. You can't stay in bonds. They're trash. Inflation is eating through your your capital. The GLD holding up at the old, all these trend lines are converging. We need to just hold up in this 174 area. I guess I should draw a little circle. Again, I use an eight screen computer for my major, tr my main trading because one monitor isn't enough. If you're a serious trader, you know that. Yeah, hold up. We just need to see it hold high and tight. 170. I mean, I would even say, even if it filled this gap, it wouldn't be that bearish. Just back channeling, back trending, filling as you move higher. Shake weak hands as you go higher, and, and then that's just kind of the game. The GDX, man, we've been so right on this guy, or gal, however you want to describe it. We said head and shoulders bottom. So we're going to go up to the 200-day, but we're over it. Now we're making higher highs. I know today's candle is kind of a doji. Just is what it is. Every day, try not to predict what's going to happen because you are going to go blind trying to do that. If you do want to practice how to you know, figure such out how to predict the next candle, play the game. What you do is you go back in time, and you go one by one. You say higher, lower, higher, lower, flat, flat. Oh, uptrend, uptrend, uptrend. Oh, backed off 200-day. I mean, you can play that game. That's how you get good at it. That's what the algorithms do. That's how they create their formulas. But neither, neither here nor there right now. GDX looks fine. It's over the 200-day. We broke the downtrend. We've talked about this a thousand times. Head and shoulders broke the downtrend. It's going to go from moving average to moving average. It's going to chop around. I wish it would straight line move up to 40, which I project, but maybe it goes higher. The S&P to GDX minor ratio is breaking out. Swing Jam posted that in the Discord room. It is a sexy little chart. Let me see if I can pull that guy up real quick. Do, 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 do. Gold versus miners. Yep, here we go. The gold miners versus U.S. equity. And if that's the case, that means the miners could be going much, much higher. And if they are... Be thankful you own them. If you don't, shame on you. You weren't listening. And not really shame on you. I Some people just don't know what how to do this kind of stuff. But I don't really get too excited about things and yell at people to take a look at it. Unless the probability is very high. I don't have time to give a shit about a lot of trades that aren't going to do much. AG, we talked about 50-day, 20-day retests of the back trend. Here's again, or, or channel back testing channels is very typical kind of like for example bitcoin it broke out and it's back testing that kind of shit happens looks fine these candles they don't really look pretty but at this point it feels like the 200 is coming if you had, let me expand this box across do, 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 do. you can see we touched it back off 200 days the middle of it um i'm kind of believing that's going to go there silver if you were day trading with me you were happy you saw the post in the discord room we're going higher i talked about it on the 10 day, uh, the 10 minute i don't have it drawn on here but i will draw it so you the folks at home can see what i was looking at i thought we had a nice little down channel I said once we broke it play long we close strongly at the end notice the volume to confirm the breakout remember volume is demand the demand was there and then look what happened today that scalp that we held overnight got paid if you had options stock you're happy camper at this point i would project the 200 day would be your first resistance especially if you're if you're a short-term trader that's where you should be taking some profits at short term if it goes higher again don't have to be an all-or-nothing trader you can sell half sell a quarter sell a third sell your mom i don't care but if you don't ever take profits the market's gonna take them for you don't be that person letter x said nothing to worry about well 
the W pattern is still in play. It's just chopping. This volume, these this, these candles with volume confirmed to me we probably are going higher. Steel prices are not coming down. Let's be honest, there's a shortage. This company is doing great. If they can create, you know, if they can put sil or blah, blah, blah. if they can put steel on the market, it's going to sell. AMD, you know, didn't say I would short it, but I said if you're watching this up this channel, you should be taking profits. If it gets back up there and makes a lower high, absolutely short the shit out of it with a tight stop. And if it breaks your stop and it breaks out, it's going higher. Keep it simple. These are the points that you look for that are the highest probabilities to make big money. Shorting low, buying high. Sometimes it pays off, but I am a very patient, disciplined trader. The more you follow me, you realize I just don't have time to play the what-if games in between levels and trend lines and all the other shit. I'd rather just let the market come to me, and when it does, it typically will write you nice checks. <clears throat> Apple said wait for the head and shoulders to either break this lower-end trend line. Oh, hold on. Let me steal this little circle to short it or the breakout to go higher. Because if we invalidate a head and shoulders top, just like the note says, Google what happens. It's called rocket ship because everybody who's sold and shorted is wrong. And if it confirms, <clears throat> watch out below. Micro strategy. We talked about it getting back to the old highs. That would be the first potential resistance. It's clearly drawn. We're backed off. We're holding the eight day. I would be willing to bet that if you drew some stuff on the 10 minute, you could figure out some sort of down channel to play the compression. Uh, maybe not. Maybe you just play the levels to keep it real simple. Say, get over that. Get over that. Anywhere between this box is support equals resistance. Get over the 834s probably takes off to go higher. I mean, let's be honest. It hit some upper trend line, upper, upper zones. Traders take profit. We look at the volume, we see it's nothing wrong with it. We don't, you know, in the sense that there's nothing, no major impending disaster signals. Like if you would have seen a upper bound with this much volume, you're a little more concerned. I mean, same thing up here, if you saw this move with that kind of volume, engulfing bar. No, the volumes are light. The green candle, gap up, these candles are still have more power than these. This might be an actual anomaly, lower candle, lower volume, big candles are typically anomalies. They're market manipulation candles where the average trader doesn't even know what they're looking at. They just look at the candle. They don't understand the volume. Again, conviction is within the volume and there's not a lot of conviction, but the price action's wide, so it's just following the market. That was that day, yesterday when the market peeled. Good old Tesla, we said you could buy the 1000 level. We also said if you weren't taking profit above the fibs, you are a greedy fuck and greedy fucks get slaughtered and everyone who knows me knows I've been a Tesla fan forever. Do I always own it or short it? No, I've never shorted it because I don't want to get caught in the squeeze. But I do know for a fact that if you had this and you didn't take profits, you can't add the dip. Well, you had a 20% pullback in two days and you're all in. Guess what? You can't add that. Well, I would be wary. As we talk about if you watched previous videos, straight line moves precede tops. Straight line move precede tops. Could Tesla be topping? Could be. It just depends. I now here's me. I'm not shorting this, but if I was going to short it, where would I short it? People who know me say would say up here because it would. I'd be watching for a failed breakout. If it breaks out and goes higher, happy for the bulls. Happy for everyone. At this point, it's not really on my radar. I said a thousand would probably be a good round number to start a little tri trimming, not trimming, trading for intraday action. And if you did get around a thousand, what did the high did it up there? Yeah, you made a hundred points. Who's going to complain about that? I'm not. Let's get into pen because this is one that is definitely on the radar. And if you are not paying attention to my market recaps or my posts, well, then you are missing out on what I consider to be free money almost. Ooh. Let's get out of here, especially with a stop. I showed you guys and gals the weekly trend lines all converging. We're hitting on them. Now we're basing at the 0.618. I put out an alert. 56 is the buy zone. This blue zone is just a support resistance zone. You can buy this with a tight stop, $3. 
I will risk $3 to make $21 all day. I will play that game, especially when I think the probabilities are high, 70-80%. I will gladly lose $3 if I think I'm going to make run out the projections on that over the long term. You're going to be a happy camper. Keep it simple. Watch this area. If it breaks below it, you're out. Don't even think about holding and just holding because it could be a continuation pattern. But if it's not, I think there is a bounce coming. This is going to be take maybe days or weeks. Look at the previous action. It could be slow to chop, so you're not in a rush. Please don't chase it up. If you're going to buy it, try to get it near the low or some sort of higher high confirming the bottom is in or a retest. We can get into that later when the circumstances call for it, but at this point, buy low. That's all you're doing. You're not doing shit. Keep it simple. XOP talked about this being potentially a binary kind of trade here. You could play the up or the down. Yeah, my arrows suck. Um, yeah, we're holding the 20 day in this old fib. I want to see over 112 to go higher. The winter is coming. We don't have any gas and oil, and there's a shortage everywhere. I don't know how oil prices don't go up, and the producers should be the ones printing money. Keep it simple. Look around the 105 area as your stop. If we break out over 112, we drew some fibs. There's some upside here. Keep it simple. Let's get into some requests. Uh, some people in the Discord room came in and said, hey, do you mind going over a chart or two? Let's do it. Valet. Interesting. Materials name. It has gotten slammed. I like this move because big move and now a smaller down move. There is a bounce, but I like all this volume down here. And here's again. This volume down here. Everybody who sold down here. Oh, God, that's not drawing well. <clears throat> Everyone who sold down here is wrong if it pops after a big move like that 23 down to 12 i mean you've got cut in half there's a bounce coming how big let's run the vid oh jesus the fibonacci's let's keep it real simple do, do, do. yeah i don't really see any major problems at this point with the stock i can see some of the potential support resistance zones they kind of talk to me as i'm drawing them Real simple, it's amazing how they line up the fibs, not. If you follow me at all, you know the algorithms are controlling the market to use and using Fibonacci retracement and extension numbers as potential support and resistance. It's not a coincidence when I draw these lines that they all line up. <clears throat> the point three eight two. Yeah, I think this is a buy down here with a tight stop. I mean, I know it's at thirteen. I mean, if you want to buy it on any pullback, or watch what happens when it gets into the twenty day. The twenty day has been the beast master, it's not letting it over it. Just go from there. I'll, you know, we'll continue to update this one as it goes on. But as of right now, I, I mean, I think this thing is bottomed. I mean, we all know what they do. They're a metals and, I guess, a uh, commodity company. And I'm, I'm bull. I'm, hey, you want to ask me what the next bull market's going to be? It's commodities. It ain't going to be tech. It's not going to be all this other stuff that's led. If you started trading in the '90s, you saw how tech rolled into a commodity bull market, and yeah. Tech will be here, but you need inputs to create all this great technology, and there are shortages of commodities everywhere. We do not have the supply, and long story short, I would be a long-term bull on commodities all day, every day. Let's get into pass. That's another one. This is a silver miner, Pan American Silver. This is an old trend line. Clearly, it was incorrect. That happens. It looks like our other silver names. They broke the downtrend. They backed up to the 50-day, just like AG. They're making higher highs. I mean, this literally is a the same chart, but different ticker. So they're both up, popping. I mean, it's going to follow silver. We did silver earlier, I think, just in case. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, it's it's it looks like it's going higher. The silver is so fucking cheap. I mean, I almost kind of want to buy a ton of it, but it's one of those things where I've got... I've got my plan on such. I've got plenty of silver. Pass looks good. Exxon Mobil. You know, this is... Wow, man, I got been drawn on a line on this mobile. Again, I transferred this from my old computer, or my other computer. So I got a lot of lines. We talked about Exxon Mobil when it was down here in this buy zone. I mean, I'm not going to say anything, but Scott, who probably still owns Exxon Mobil, knows why we bought it down here. Or he bought it. I didn't, but... Anyway, long story short, I see some sort of compression going on here, like a channel. Man, there's so many freaking lines on this. There's a reason why it's hitting these. Let's zoom out. 
the time machine usually tells us. Okay, so we have an old downtrend. That makes sense. Old support resistance. Let's get that out of here because that was clearly a trend. If it broke, get out of here. You know, it dumped, which it did. This was the overhaul overhead, old overhead channel. Let's get rid of this. This is not correct. Yeah, let's get rid of this because it's just way too many trend lines. Let's keep it simple. I'm pretty sure if we draw a fib, we'll see. Oh, if we draw a fib, we'll see something here. Well, look at that. The 618 lines up with this. You can't make this shit up, man. <laughs> I try to tell people fibs are important. If you've made it to this point in the video and you've watched enough of this, I didn't just make the 618 pop up there that's where it popped up 618 mid 67s it could compress here it looks very similar to xop if you're a bull have you know trail your stops if you're a bear you could start shorting up here but yeah watch the levels you know the 20 day i would watch mr 20 day in red that's why i have it nice and thick it seems to be holding that so far let me zoom in a little more do do, do. time machine zooming in yeah 20 day keep it simple you're over 20 day bullish you're below it get out if you are bullish long term you need to get over this whatever you want to call this crap here this is a little noisy but that's what happens sometimes you connect all the tops we need to get over this that's the cap anyway dan max at exp realty aka the trading agent your friend to answer questions try to give you insight that you can't pay for because you know what you can't buy experience and i've seen everything and the people that know me know i've seen a lot you know am i always perfect no is any trader no but we play probabilities you know you learn so much from your experience and making mistakes and getting burned and fucking things up that if you don't correct stuff you don't you don't survive well i haven't survived we're correcting things every time. We always are. We're always trying to do what the market's doing, not what we think. Anyway, let's keep it simple. I'll talk to you guys sooner than later. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you like the content. Also, smash the like button. Share with your friends and add a comment. If there's a topic or stock you'd like me to give you insight about, let me know in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer your question. Thanks.